Why is the 9th of Av so important to the Jewish people? Well, greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope. I'm here with Tim Moore, our senior evangelist. I'm Nathan Jones, internet evangelist here at Lamb and Lion Ministries. And Tim has done a lot of research on what's called the 9th of Av. And we find throughout history, Tim, that the 9th of Av, or Tisha B'Av, is a very important day in Israel's history. Why is that? Well, you know, we obviously sparked this conversation because we have been in the midst of a study of Daniel. And it is thought that the devastation of Jerusalem that led to Daniel and his compatriots being taken into exile in Babylon happened on or about the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av. And yet, as Jewish historians and scholars tie that date to so many other occurrences, calamities in Jewish history, we think it's worthy of commentary today. So when we say Av, that is the Hebrew calendar, right? It's a particular month? It is a particular month in the Hebrew calendar. Okay. And it moves around on our Gregorian calendar the same way that Passover moves around on our Gregorian calendar and other Jewish holidays move around. But following the lunar calendar that the Jews utilize to this day, it is a particular day of the year. Yeah, kind of a solar lunar calendar, they, they mix it. Yes. So on this particular day, the ninth of their month of Av, always disaster seems to fall. Why is that? And can you just give us some examples? Well, I don't know why that is other than I think the Lord never allows a, a coincidences. I always think they are God incidences. And sometimes you made the statement in a recent episode, Nathan, that God uh, sometimes reiterates over and over again, just like we do with our children. He wants us to learn certain lessons. Sometimes he has to repeat them to get them through our thick noggins. Yes. So I think with the Jewish people, many calamities have bestruck them on the 9th of Av, always as a form of God's punishment or discipline, trying to motivate them to turn from their wicked ways and back to Him. So It creates a pattern then. So the Jewish people would say, hey, God is, is in this, right? It certainly does. Okay. So they would cite that the 12 spies who were sent into the land of Canaan came back and gave a bad report, at least 10 of the 12, on the 9th of Av, leading the people to worry that they could not actually take the promised land. Only Joshua and Caleb, of course, gave a, a good report. So they hearken back to that as being one of the first calamities that bestruck their nation because they hearkened to a bad report. Obviously, as we've just mentioned, the first temple being destroyed by the Babylonians on the 9th of Av, and that led to Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being taken into exile. The second temple that was constructed by Ezra and Nehemiah, not as grand as Solomon's, but enlarged and beautified by Herod, they, they would date, the destruction of that temple in A.D. 70 to the 9th of Ab. Interesting. They would also say that a, a following revolt that happened under Bar Kokhba uh, and was overtaken by the Romans was also uh, occurred on the 9th of Ab. We would date it in early August of 135 A.D. And they would put a lot of other things that have happened on that date. In more modern era, it is considered that the first crusade into the Holy Land uh, commenced on the 9th of Av in the year 1096. And that's interesting because the Crusaders went to liberate Palestine from the Holy Land from the Muslims, but they ended up murdering and killing all the Jews on the way to They certainly to did. Yeah. I mean, these so-called so Christian Crusaders oftentimes rounded up the Jews, locked them in their synagogue, set it on fire, and then sang Christian hymns while the Jews burned. And so that's a great tragedy that we as Christians need to understand still resonates in the hearts of Jews, and it's why sometimes there is still resistance to the gospel message. So we have to understand that history and baggage as we come to share the gospel of our Jewish Messiah with our Jewish friends. So what other modern events happened on the 9th of Av? Because this is fascinating. It is. In the year uh, 1290, the Jews were expelled from England. In the year 1306, the Jews were expelled from France. And in the year 1492, we always think of what happened in Columbus Port sailed the ocean blue. Columbus yeah. sailed the ocean blue. But simultaneously that year, on the 9th of Av, King Ferdinand and Isabella declared that all the Jews must be expelled from Spain. And you this know, happened on the 9th of Av. They dated to the 9th of Av. Okay. And so we think of anti-Semitism as being a modern tragedy. It's been throughout human history because Satan has always been trying to persecute, prosecute, or eradicate the Jewish people. Germany entered World War I on the 9th of Av. Uh, Heinrich Himmler formally received approval from the Nazi party for the final solution, which led to the Holocaust. Uh, in 1941, on the 9th of Av, 
The Jews were deported in a mass deportation that led to many of them being killed from the uh, Warsaw Ghetto to Treblinka in 1942 on the 9th of Av. I could go on and on again. In modern, very modern era, Israel was convinced by the United States to disengage from Gaza in 2005 on the 9th of Av. And we see what has happened now as Hamas came to power and launched its attacks on October 7th. So was that the 9th of Av? The, not the October 7th, okay. but the disengagement from Gaza was. So over and over again, this date resonates in the hearts of Jews as being a date that marks tremendous calamity, persecution, and, and devastation from their past. Well, from a prophetic perspective then, are they anticipating, at least the Messianic Jews who understand Bible prophecy, are they anticipating the tribulation to begin on the 9th of Av or the you know the final attack of the Antichrist on the 9th of Av? Have you heard any? I've not heard anything specific. Okay. I think they would not be at all surprised, and frankly, neither would I, that God mm -hmm. has in His perfect alignment uh, fulfillments that will, in hindsight, be miraculous to us, but I would not dare to say in, in foresight this will happen on a particular date. But I think there's something that we can learn even from the example of Daniel. It was a calamity for the first temple to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It was a calamity for Jewish young men to be carted off into exile and for the nation to be obliterated for a period of 70 years until Cyrus sent them back. But as we testified from Daniel chapter 1, verse 2, Daniel ascribes even the circumstance of him being carted off into exile as the will of God. That's right. And so he doesn't say, this is terrible, this is tragic, you know, woe is me. He said, God willed that Nebuchadnezzar would defeat King Jehoiakim. God willed that Jerusalem would be destroyed. God willed that I would be carted off into exile. Folks, I can't think of a better example of how we should respond even to devastating events in our lives. We can either fixate on things that have happened in our past and not move on, or we can say, Lord, you have willed that this would happen in my life. And more important than saying, why is this happening to me, is, Lord, what would you have me to learn from this experience, or what can I do to serve as a conduit of blessing even if I'm, a, I'm in a pagan land, I'm living in exile amongst a pagan people, how can I stay faithful to you and serve you regardless of my circumstances? Excellently said, Tim. Well, folks, check out the 9th of Av. Do a little research on that because it's a prophecy uh, in a way because it shows that God's hand is in the history of the Jewish people. It also shows he hasn't washed his hands of the Jewish people. The fact that they're back and continuing to suffer persecution is leading up prophetically to the return of Jesus Christ. So ask yourself, is your heart ready? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Are you saved?